Hello and welcome back to yet another mission of Legendary Iron Man Exquisite Timing. I call this run the Revenge of the Exquisite Timing as it is our second attempt to do the Exquisite Timing feat on the highest difficulty Legendary Iron Man mode with permanent dark events. I want to undermine, uh, underpin that uh, the Legendary version of that um, of that particular feat is much more difficult to obtain than the commander version but i think this time we got a really solid strategy of doing it but before we can reap the benefits of our strategy first we need to do a mission today it's time for operation dragon father uh, where we are being paid with a nice scientist two specialists if we want to and uh, around 100 intel how could we say no to that opportunity As a matter of fact we can't uh, we need to do it so, interestingly enough, we do have two tired soldiers, which already, um, which already brings us to um, the fact that we need to have one of our rookies uh, chiming in. Who are we going to pick? Um, we had Mike, uh, the public Bravo here. That's one option. I think we're going with Dark Tower Noxus just um, for good old times. He was one of the core members. Eventually everyone will see um, action. In terms of the equipment, it's relatively straightforward. We're taking the DLC weapons and that's about it. Um, there's really not much more we have at this point because we're saving all of the uh, funds for other stuff. The good part about the DLC weapons though is you get at least lightly, lightly modified. Uh, that just looks so much better than his other dress. Uh, but I think we're going to still let him be um, Randy Savage Macho Man with an open chest. He looks like a World Wrestling Federation wrestler. And Dr. Noxus takes a normal rifle. No, actually we can give him... Uh, the DLC weapon as well. There we go. But, you know, Doctor, you can't pull off the same look. That's not okay. Okay, well, it's the shirt, I suppose. And uh, here we go. We're directly going into the mission. Perfect mission would be uh, to manage this mission flawless and get all of uh, the um, operatives plus uh, maybe get a few promotions here and there. There are a lot of loss, which is great for promotions. All right, here we go. Just landed. Let's take a look. So we landed in that back alley. Could easily take the high ground up here. We can see the extraction point is there. We got one, two um, soldiers down there. And we got our VIP over here, which isn't too bad. One of the things that we can consider doing is there is a bit of an... Uh, it's not an exploit, it's utilization of game mechanics. Uh, there is a bit of a specialty that one should be aware of. As long as you're concealed, you can still spot out packs like the lost ones. They won't uh, move, but you can... Uh, activate them as soon as um, they are spotting an advent pack. They went, won't do that by themselves, but it is definitely possible to let them essentially just spot an advent pack. And as soon as that advent pack moves into the direction of uh, the loss, both of the packs will trigger. And that will help us because we don't need to fight them. We can just sit back, relax, drink, uh, drink some tea and let them fight it out. It will, however, no longer work once we're revealed. Another game mechanic to consider is freeing up soldiers can be done whilst we are 
whilst we are still in cover, matter of fact, uh, in concealment that is, matter of fact, it will not break concealment. And that is awesome, because it allows you to get another soldier before even approaching the enemy. So far, so good. Next turn, we can move up just a tiny bit. We're not in a hurry. There's no timer on this mission. And like I said, the loss won't move at all. Unless you spot them. Uh, of course, uh, that has not worked out as uh, expected. And there we go. So now, the whole plan that I made beforehand is unfortunately no longer going to work. Too bad. Well, that's why you have a Reaper and not just a Ranger. Okay, first things first, Dark Tower Noxus. Let's get you a promotion. One of the things that we can do is we can start uh, we can start spawning some more losts and basically let them run into the enemy. The lost spawn is very close, meaning the next explosion will trigger loss. Well, there's a chance that uh, we would kill him, but if we don't, we're standing in the open and I'm not willing to take uh, those kind of chances. We're probably just going to go back. Not the be best placement. From this last year. What we could do though is we could prep. Let's see. All of those here would not give us line of sight on the loss down there. That's too bad. So we could try to prep him. Which we are doing. Five points of damage. There we go. We can now theoretically move back into full cover. This lost here. Uh, how could he reach us? Could move around here, but that's probably too far away. Matter of fact, let's not take any chances. Good. My biggest problem is that those guys here still could start to move on into our space. I don't want that to happen. Uh, 
Yeah, but my grenades unfortunately can't reach the soldier down there. And I don't want to waste our high ground. Could move to here, but we already know that there are additional packs here, which again, I don't want to trigger. By moving out of line of sight, we should be fine. We're overwatching. The only person who could be targeted here is Renvin. Mind spin. All right. Come on, hit him. Nice. Good job. There's a swarm of lost, which we have to deal with. And we're triggering even more losts. That's the point where high ground and enough ammunition <clears throat> become invaluable. So what we want is we want agency against that guy there. How we can get it is by moving up to a corner. I don't want to trigger another pack. What I want to do is I'd like to reach him up there. Apparently that's not as easy as I thought it would be. Or should we don't have a flashbang? And the beauty of XCOM's grenades once again. He blocks the ladder, which is smart. It's actually a pretty smart move. Lucky enough for him, <coughs> he was able to land the mind spin. Moving up. This surely must be able to hit him. Well, we can hit everything but him, apparently. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And that'll be four falling damage, so grenade plus falling damage would kill him. Now, on to the other options that we do have for now, which is dealing with those stranglers. Unfortunately, I can't risk anything below 100% at this point. I really need to make sure that we're getting the mind control resolved. Top priority, so to speak. There is the damage, there is the falling damage, and with that, and an permanently levitating uh, sector, we show that the XCOM engine can handle even more complicated fights. Good, for now it's time to definitely unload and get those guys killed. 
<coughs> the dashers first, of course. Unfortunately, we missed. That's really unfortunate. Now this here is burning, which gets me hugely concerned because burning buildings can start to collapse, and I don't, I definitely don't want that to happen. We're getting rid of the dashers. I don't want to continue standing there for now. Let's hope that we can get this guy down. We can. That's good. Reloading. Very nice. Another dasher. Okay, so we got one standing here, but I personally think that this move here will be further than he could do, uh, go in one turn, uh, same on the other side. He would need to ch uh, run too far. So what we're going to do is we're rather switching positions here. I definitely want to make sure we're not losing uh, Zirkim. Or getting him injured just because he's standing right next to a fire. More lost. And those lost trigger on the sector, maybe. Well, that's quite a handful of enemies here. Oh, come on. You must be kidding me. He was never, ever in range. Good. Time to use the fact that we do have unlimited ammunition on our sidearm. Dealing with all of uh, the small dashers first. Before then transitioning into dealing with the rest. Besides, let's give Renvin here a couple of kills. Reloading. Yeah, and Renvin can start. Softening up this target, very nice. Killing the brute. And that lost. to kill. I know farewell that there are enemies over here. Don't want to trigger them yet. Now. 
Quick feed moves a tiny bit back, reloads. Reload for Zirikim as well. Got a pistol overwatch and Noxus does a normal overwatch. Gotta get the additional soldiers. Telling me that they reached him again, are you? All right. Got him. Good. There we go. That's a few losses dealt with. Soon more losses are going to follow. I'll leave this one up for grabs as. The advents can deal with the lost. Fortunately, we don't have a line of sight on that particular advent. That's too bad. What I'm wondering is would a grenade change anything? Potentially. Hmm. It will also start spawning another set of losts. Don't want to go too close because we know that there's another pack here, right? So that has a uh, that has us nailed down a tiny bit. Instead, how about, since we don't have a timer here, just trying to fall back a bit more. It's a bit dangerous because we theoretically could be mind spinned into a mind control, which I don't want. So how about we're getting out of line of sight entirely, getting ready to activate that additional unit next turn. We're overwatching, reload, overwatch. And we're overwatching with Renman as well. Finally, the remaining pack begins to add. There is the shotgun. Nice overwatch shot. Holy shit, they nailed the sector. Well, finally got, uh, we got, finally had hit some overwatch shots, and thanks to the heavy weapons, there was a pretty damn good chance that they would actually kill him. That's why I'm always letting the losts uh, live, or at least, at least one of them, because it wastes the overwatch shots and. Um, the AI really does know super well how to deal with it. Plus, this guy might even attack him. Yeah, for good measure. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Seventy percent isn't that bad, and I would actually like to start with uh, trying to mow him down. So what we're going to do is uh, we're reloading, and I'd like to get that advent down here and kill him. 
There we go. Nope, that's not good enough. I want to charge in and slice the sector and kill him. So that's what we're going to do next turn. In the meantime, we're taking an aggressive move here. But it will be the right one. There you go, and just for good measure, how about we're killing all of these guys. There you go. Bring it on. Getting one dasher down. Uh, we're blocking the ladder here. Mainly because we don't want the dashers to reach our, um, our nice high ground spot here. Unfortunately, that was not successful. Reload. And this is a 50-50. Let's hope for some good RNG. Of course, that's not happening. But we can at least serve justice against uh, the sector. Luckily for us, I blocked the ladder, which means that the dashers can reach us, but can't hit us. Pesky little critters. There we go, headshot. Trying to get a promotion here. Reloading. And let's kill this guy. Very nice. That leaves us with an overwatch if needed. Also some extra loot. I'm still a bit miffed that I had an injury on our on our Ranger 2. Should not be too bad, though. So that's probably around, yeah, I don't know, 15 days at max. Yeah, let's move up. Reloading with Noxus. And we're having an overwatch, another overwatch, sniper overwatch with Zirkum and quick feet overwatches as well. I have not noticed any enemies. Let's get to the VIP. Tech teaming it. Noxus moves over here. And our new specialist moves over here. 
Zirkim. Yeah, I might just want to take the high ground. And there is still an overwatch. Lost Swarm begins to come surprisingly close. So what we want to do in return is we're taking positions at the window. Quick feet will take our VIP. Targets in tow. Secure any additional operatives if possible, but make sure you get our contacts to the evac point. We have a visual confirmation on the VIP. And that's Overwatch, Overwatch. VIP moves to here. Reload Overwatch. Good, there is the Lost Swarm. <clears throat> I think that Renman still did not have his promotion. So let's try to give him a couple of kills at least. Good. I think we should, we should be able to deal with the swarm rather easy. There we go, finally. All right, Renman moves up. There's the rest of the swarm. Starting to get the dashers. Our VIP begins to move up to here. More soldiers on the high ground, and Zirkim really doesn't have an incredibly good line of sight, which forces me to move him to here. Not the perfect shots, to be honest. Adjusting aim. But we're going to be okay. They can't reach us, so we should be absolutely fine. We're going to get the last operative, and then we are on our way out. Reload with Noxus. Overwatch, and Overwatch. Yep, so far so good. Good, we said that Renvin needed some more kills. Let's try to do that. One. Two. Three. Taken care of. Oh yeah. Reloading. 
No more targets. Nox has already got his promotion. Zirkim already got his promotion. Unfortunately, quick feed, uh, feed will be a bit out of service after this mission. But look at that, we got another soldier. Moving, moving. Moving, so that's an overwatch. Sirkim can definitely get out of here next turn, and I think that's really not that much we need to look out for after this round. I think we can evac everyone. All right. Well, it's tempting to get a few more promotions out of it. I don't want to uh, start use it, uh, resorting to those methods yet. Good. I think we got two promotions out of it, which is good enough. Yeah, we killed 53 uh, enemies, so that looks good on paper. In reality, uh, having the injury is what sucks. <sighs> 17 days. That's worse than I thought. I was hoping 15 or uh, below, but at least we got four promotions out of it. So we're going to go with Blade Master here. Quick feet, unfortunately, needs to hit the bench for now. We're going for a long watch. <clears throat> making Zirkim an excellent sniper. Renman got his promotion and we're sure as hell going to go for Shredder. And Darktown Oxus becomes yet another specialist. Are you kidding me? Well, it's not bad. I mean, at least we do have a lot of specialists, so that'll be fine. Got a laser sight out of it and two more specialists and another scientist. So... Probably should have promoted him after the new specialists were coming on board. So, yeah, I think we're fine with uh, going with another bond. Yeah, 17 days definitely stinks. Dr. Noxus. Good, so that's our first specialist. We got Dash, uh, Dakshia Shen, a no name specialist. And as our third specialist, we got Antolio Golubev. Nice to meet you, buddy. There we go, color coded everyone. If we take a look at our roster, we now do have four specialists and one of each other class. That's not bad, at least we always have uh, healing available, and I don't mind running with multiple specialists, to be honest. They also level quite fast, and they are incredibly versatile class, so not so bad. There's an engineer, which uh, will immediately draw our attention. It's actually a good next step having two engineers to begin with is super helpful we finished the research of uh, the officer allowing us uh, now to build proving grounds which we wanted to do uh, from the beginning 
And I'm okay with going for resistance communication because that allows us to build resistance towers and make um, more efficient long uh, long range contact in three days. We're going to immediately go for proving grounds because that was uh, the next big, big uh, target. We're continuing our excavation here and probably going to even speed up the the building of the pro uh, proving grounds. We can squeeze out a tiny bit more um, speed out of that. I think that will be worth it. Uh, just looking at the other things, resistance communication is fine and we get our engineer hopefully soon. So yeah, we're on, on a good, good uh, start here. Perfect. View that room. We're definitely going for proving ground. And since we're only three days away from getting that additional engineer, I will keep uh, John White here, making the proving ground rush even faster. Which means, look at that, uh, before the first month, like before March ends, we already got an established proving grounds which is faster than the last time. We can then start with um, the school jack. Just need to continue with clearing the debris. Um, that's important, that needs to happen fast. But I think this rush here will help us. There we go. So that's our engineer. And we are going to use her in order to excavate up here. Takes another 10 days, so just right when the proving ground is done, we can uh, build our uh, power, because I don't think that we're going to have any other way of getting two additional power. It's just not happening. Um, and we need that once we are school an officer. Okay, nothing else is here, which means we are going back to intel farming. Got a nice chunk of intel so far, which is good. We need way more though, so you cannot have enough or too much intel. And there's the first retaliation side. It's not the end of the world uh, losing this one here, but it offers us, if we're winning it, it would offer us an increase in uh, income, so income would go actually up and since we're pretty uh, much right at the point where we get another supply drop that would be awesome also we can get a few promotions let's take a look at our soldiers shall we so we got zirkim here who can't be on the uh, mission that's too bad but haywire certainly can so it's Specialist plus Reaper and potentially Specialist and Specialist again. Is that what we're saying? Well, maybe that is what we're saying. Maybe we're going in with only Specialists and a Reaper. <laughs> that will be a fantastic mission. You know, here's the deal. I'll probably take two Specialists and the Reaper. And then I'll just get one more rookie. Just to get another character class. I'll take anything at this point. Second Grenadier would be awesome. Second Sharpshooter would be awesome. Well, or... Nah, I think that's fine. I think that's exactly what we need to do. All right, that brings us to the end of uh, today's episode. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Today's question is, what uh, do you hate the most about retaliation missions? So, uh, first of all, which of the retaliation types of missions uh, do you uh, like the least? And uh, did you have a funny experience in one of them? I'd like to hear your stories. 
in the comments down below and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.